How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. I hope you've been finding the time to do some drawing lately. And if you have been doing some drawing, then I hope it's going well. If you have been struggling to find the time to do some drawing, then I can relate because I've not been drawing that much this week. I created the most recent study session video last week in which I had done some drawing for that. But other than that, my week has mostly consisted of editing and planning. And I've also been working my day job throughout the week, which does involve a form of drawing, but I wouldn't say that working on AutoCAD gives me the same satisfaction as drawing on paper with pencil. So because of that, this weekend, or the most recent weekend by the time that I've uploaded this, I'm going to make sure that I find the time to sit down and work on the drawing that you see me creating on screen. This is a, a drawing that's going to be part of a series of drawings which are all similar. And I'm excited to produce a, a few of these because I've always liked the thought of having a, a collection of work in a series that has a, a consistent narrative, I suppose. And I'll probably talk more about all of this in another audio log, but the drawings are going to be based on dense urban environments and I'm emphasising that by drawing a lot of this abstract architecture merging into each other. It's, it mostly gives me an excuse to continue creating full works of art as opposed to the, the small example drawings that I typically do for the purpose of a tutorial. I'm also drawing these on some A4 Bristol board which is a, a lot nicer to work on compared to the printer paper that I'll often use for drawings which are of less importance I suppose. Some of you might know already that I've been studying anatomy throughout these study sessions that I create and a lot of the drawings that I make when doing that are in this red sketchbook that I have and that's specifically for my drawings surrounding anatomy. And I'm glad that I made that decision because it's a, a nice feeling to have all of these drawings in one place. Drawings that continue to be useful as well. I mean, whenever I need to remind myself about the proportions of the skull, let's say, then I can just flip back a few pages and see all of my notes and observational drawings that I made. And I, I do find myself doing that quite often. Now, not all of my drawings I create for the purpose of studying anatomy are in there though. I do also have many that are drawn on basic printer paper, but these are always the drawings that are more for practice rather than presentation. And I know what some of you might be thinking, you're thinking, Dan, if you are studying anatomy, then aren't all of your drawings practice drawings? And, and yeah, whilst that's true, the ones that are in my sketchbook are mostly observational sketches, often drawn from reference to store the information that I use to then practice drawing from my imagination on paper. So for example, I have a few pages in my sketchbook on the anatomy of the skull, and these are all nicely presented with all of my notes because I want it all to be concise and ordered for whenever I need to find some information again, and I refer back to those pages. But then slotted between those pages are some loose sheets of printer paper on which I've been using that information to practice drawing the skull from my imagination. And this is the same for most pages. I do make sure to keep all of my sketches and studies because they can also be of value at a later date. It's also important for me to be able to document the learning process because that's the purpose of the study session videos. It's a way for me to learn with you. But that's the sketchbook that I use for anatomy and I do intend to fill it eventually assuming the study session videos are ongoing. You know, I don't think I've ever filled a sketchbook. I remember I started a series a while back in which I was creating all of these full page drawings and attempting to fill it, but I must have gotten about six pages in and then stopped. I still have that sketchbook here actually, and I think I did some drawing in it not so long ago for one of these audio logs. There's a lot of half finished artwork in there, and that's something that I'm guilty of as well. I'll often start a new drawing, whether that's in a, a sketchbook or on paper, and I'll get about half of it done, use that footage for a video like this, and then I don't go back to the drawing and finish it. And I, I don't have a problem with the drawing either, it's just that I get distracted with whatever I need to work on next, and then by the time I'm required to create a drawing for a video again, I have probably forgotten about it, and so I start something new. The more I think about it, the more I realise that sketchbooks might not be for me. 
because I've had a few of them over the years that I've never filled, and the drawings that I create within them seem to be the types of drawings that should probably be drawn on individual paper. I like to spend hours on each piece and fill the entire page, and I'm not sure if that should be done in a sketchbook. I mean, of course, you can do that, I have done that, but personally, I think that the types of drawings I create, like the one you see on screen, should be drawn separately on its own paper, and then it's its own piece, right? So then I suppose you have to ask the question, what does belong in a sketchbook? Well, as the name suggests, sketches, probably. The types of drawings which don't take days to finish, and a lot of people use sketchbooks to have all of their work in one place. They're also easy to use on the go, and if you have the ability to not be so precious with them, then you are able to freely sketch whatever you want in them. And that's another personal issue that I have with sketchbooks. Whilst it can be nice to have all of your work in one place, it's also frustrating when you create a drawing that you're not happy with, and it's sitting there amongst the drawings you were happy with. Whenever I start a new sketchbook, I have a habit of overthinking and I'm too concerned with making it presentable, especially the first page, because in my mind, I see the sketchbook to be almost like a, an art book and if the first page is rubbish, then anything after it will be as well. A lot of people have fear of the first page because they want to start it well, right? That They've just got this nice fresh sketchbook which has yet to be drawn in and so they place too much importance on making it look good. Which you'd assume was a good thing, right? Except the issue comes when you get to the next page and then you think, well, that first page was great, now I have to keep this up. Every page has to be great. And then, all of a sudden, you have this sketchbook which becomes more like an art book and you lose the freedom to draw without the fear of having to make it look good. Which is, I think anyways, the biggest advantage of having a sketchbook. In fact, they should be called shit books. <laughs> that sounds wrong, but if they were called that and the, and the purpose of them was to create bad artwork, you wouldn't be under any pressure when drawing in it. Also, I am talking from experience when I say this, it's one of the reasons why I tend to mostly draw on paper, because if I don't like something that I create, I can toss that paper aside and start again. But also, if I do create a drawing that I really like, I then have that separate and it's its own thing, right? Then I don't have to worry about what I create after it. So, I suppose it's up to you as the artist to decide how you want to use a sketchbook and if you want to use one at all. I've seen some people only using sketchbooks, you know, that those people who aren't concerned with what's on the previous pages and can just turn over to a new page and draw without worry. But I'm not one of those people, that's why when I'm practicing, I will draw on some cheap printer paper, then I can put all of that paper in a plastic sleeve and never have to look at it again. Also, if I'm mostly creating drawings like the one you see on screen, these need to exist on separate pieces of paper. And as I said earlier, I'm drawing this on some Bristol board, which is what I find to be the best surface to work on. It can be expensive, but I see it as an investment, especially if I'm spending a lot of time working on an important drawing. Before I discovered this, I used to work on cartridge paper, which was okay, but you'll find that a lot of cartridge paper has a, a textured surface which can be a pain to work on. I mean, now that I've experienced drawing on a, a smooth surface when using this Bristol board, I don't think I could ever go back to using cartridge. And that's another drawback with most sketchbooks. The paper that's in them can sometimes be poorer quality. Of course, you can get the sketchbooks which are more suited to drawing, and they usually have paper in them with a higher GSM, which is what you want if you intend to draw on both sides of the paper. If the paper's quite thin, then you'll find that your pencil work may be visible on the other side. This is more of an issue when using different mediums like pens or watercolour. In addition to the paper weight though, you also need to consider the surface of the paper because like I said, drawing on a textured surface isn't as good as drawing on a smooth surface. At least, I don't think so. Don't get me wrong though, sketchbooks are definitely a good solution for many people. For example, if you travel around a lot, then being able to throw your sketchbook in your bag and have it there for when you need it is a, a big convenience. Sometimes people can only find the time to draw when they are on the go. 
and so having a, a solid sketchbook to work in when you're sat on the train or wherever is ideal. I mean I'm lucky to have a space dedicated to drawing and doing everything that I do these days because most people don't have that. Before I did, I had to do all of my drawings at the kitchen table whilst my mum cooked dinner and uh, I had to always pack my paper and pencils away and get them out again every time I wanted to do some drawing. And that in itself can create some resistance. It's like driving to the gym, right? Being in the gym might not be an issue, but having to get changed and then drive to the gym, that makes it more of a chore. At least now, whenever I have to do some work, I just have to walk into my office and everything is how I left it. That's something that I probably shouldn't take for granted. Anyways, this drawing on screen is coming along and I think in the next audio log, I'll talk more about this series of drawings that I'm working on. With all that being said, I'm going to end this one here. Also, let me know in the comments if you prefer to draw in sketchbooks or on paper or both or, or none. Actually, if you don't draw on paper or on sketchbooks, what do you draw on? Maybe you like drawing on walls, you might be a, a graffiti artist, or maybe you like drawing on people because you're a, a tattoo artist. I'm assuming if you are any of those things though, you probably also draw on paper or have a sketchbook, so let me know. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.